Hi guys, so I'm here today for another three book recommendation video. You might not know what these are, but the title is pretty self-explanatory. Essentially, I take three books which I think have similar themes, stories, characters, and will appeal to a similar reader. So whether you have read and enjoyed one of these books, or just like the sound of any of these books, I think each one is worth checking out. And the theme of today's three book recommendation is quite simply Beauty and the Beast retellings. So this is actually the first time I've done a specific retellings episode of this series. You can check out the different things I've kind of compared over the years in a playlist down below. But I guess there aren't a lot of books that I've read retelling the same fairy tale. However, Beauty and the Beast not only seems to be an incredibly popular fairy tale to retell, it also seems to be one I've read quite a lot of. And there are three in particular, which are all also fancy novels set in kind of fantastical pasts that might remind you of the medieval period or some other sort of slightly abstract historical time but with magic in existence. So like I said, if you like one, I think you'll like the rest. And without further ado, let's get into the books. I'm gonna start with the one I read the longest time ago and work up to the one I read most recently. So the first one is Roses by Rose Mannering. You may have heard this name before because Rose is also a booktuber with a fantastic booktube channel, so that will also be linked down below in the description box. But this is the first in a series by Rose. However, it does have like a full completion story element to it, although um, the kind of narrative of the world follows on in the second book, which is a retelling of another fairy tale, it has a different protagonist. So it, it still works as a Beauty and the Beast retelling on its own, and it's a very satisfactory book, but it also makes you want to read on and find out what else is going to happen in this world. So what is special about this Beauty and the Beast retelling? I don't really need to summarise the main plot of any of these books because you probably know the crux of the story. But in this story we follow a lot of Beauty's past. So we follow Beauty growing up in a world that Rose has created, a fantasy world where Humans live alongside people with little bits of magic in them, but there's a lot of distrust there. The people with magic in their blood are shunned, and there is sort of tumult breaking out amongst those two groups. And our main character, Beauty, is a slightly odd young girl. She has been raised by a family that are not her parents that she was left with as a baby and doesn't quite know herself where she fits in. There's lots of gorgeous world building in this story. Like I said, it's very much of the author's creating and it's really beautiful to learn about and get immersed in. Beauty is also a really interesting character. Like I said, this book very much in large part focuses on her growing up and we really see her develop as a character and follow how she becomes the woman that she is. Naturally, there comes a point in the story where she meets the, the beast equivalent character um, but even before that you're completely hooked on the storyline and it's very much enjoyable that's just like an added bonus when you get to that point and that story follows through and although like I said there is satisfaction in the end there's also so much more to get excited about for the next in the series which is called Feathers. But the next book I've actually mentioned quite a few times recently because I've been on my fairy book binge and this book certainly has a lot of fairies at the centre and that is Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm. This again is the first in a series so there are two books in this series that start off which follow the story of the protagonists from the first book. So Sorcha and Eamon, who are our beauty and beast equivalents, are followed in books one and two. And there are also other books in the series retelling different fairy tales, um, but I believe those are completely independent stories. I haven't read those ones yet. It's very much just that first duology that tells their story. But this is one where the first book does leave off on a cliffhanger, so you're probably gonna to wanna to pick up book two. But it is equally as beautiful. This one is set in a world with lots of Celtic Irish influences on it and we follow a young woman named Sorcha who takes on the beauty role. She has been raised in a brothel although she herself serves as more of a midwife and a healer and she wants to be a healer and there's actually this blood beetle plague ravaging the land um, including her, her adoptive father and she wants to be able to heal it. So she goes to the fairies uh, in, the, in the woods and asks for their help. The fae then send her to an island which can only be accessed every few years and on this island she meets Eamon, who is a exiled or banished fairy and that's kind of how the story proceeds. This is a book where the first book follows that Beauty and the Beast initial premise. The second book, however, seems to veer away from that, although there is still a romance there. Sorka and Eamon remain the central characters. It, 
follows its own unique storyline and all of that has been set up in the first book as well. So although these books are all Beauty and the Beast retellings, they're all unique, beautifully crafted stories um, that in no way feel like regurgitations of same old, same old. In this case, we get loads and loads of detail in the world of the Fae. So we see this gorgeous like combination of the Fae realm and the human realm and it draws in so much old folklore and fairy tales uh, that even beyond the Beauty and the Beast retelling you might be familiar with if you're interested in kind of like folklore and um, fae related legends. There's also a passionate romance at the centre of this story that cannot be denied and it's a wonderfully developed romance that I really enjoyed following. Sorka is a beautifully strong independently willed young woman and she is wonderful to just follow on her journey. You get completely hooked and that ending <sighs> I'm going to tell you now, you're going to need book two straight away. But lastly, for my Beauty and the Beast retellings, I have Beauty by Robin McKinley. Robin McKinley is a classic fantasy author. If you have been reading fantasy, particularly fantasy with female leads written by women over the years, you will probably have heard this name even if you haven't checked her out yet. And her books are gorgeous. There's a beautiful quaintness to Robin McKinley's writing. I've read two of her books now and I'd say both books kind of fulfil that description. And what I mean by that is that they're quite soft and steady. They don't feel at all rushed and they can come sometimes be a little bit slow and descriptive and just kind of following the thoughts of the characters without any action going on. But it's gorgeous to follow and it's beautifully rendered and you feel so relaxed yet invested when reading these stories. Like I love detailed writing and a little bit of slow development and that all works here even in what is quite a short book. This is the only book in this video that's actually a complete standalone and in many ways it does follow the traditional storyline of Beauty and the Beast. We have a father who picks a rose and is captured by a beast and instead sends his daughter to take his place. However, again, we follow a lot more of the build-up to these events. So we get to know the character who again is named Beauty as a child and her growing up and her family. She has two sisters and a father and they all have their own little storylines going on, although of course Beauty's is at the centre, but she loves her family deeply and cares about what happens to them. I love Beauty in this book. She very much recalls the character of Belle in the Disney version. She is an academic and a scholar. She likes to sit up late translating Greek. Um, she is also quite independent and I think that's something quite true of all of these Beauty characters. Um, they have strong personalities and that's wonderful to see. Now we do follow that build up to meeting the beast and uh, Beauty's uh, past and her growing up which I think gives this book some like solid ground to stand upon but it is also very much the story of her um, living with the beast in the castle and the relationship that develops with them. Um, however it does change slightly from the original. There are no dancing teapots unfortunately but that does not in any way take away from the magic of this book and there are specific unique elements to the curse and the spell going on around the beast and um, that you learn over the course of the story. All three of these books however are absolutely wonderful stories. Whether you are a die-hard Beauty and the Beast fan or not, Beauty and the Beast is not one of my favourite fairy tales. I have nothing against it but it's never been say a Disney film that I've gone back and watched time and time again. However I love all of these books. They're all beautifully written, wonderful stories and each author is one that I will continue to read in the future so I do recommend checking them all out. But do let me know if you have read any Beauty and the Beast retellings. I know Juliette Marillier for example has one that I plan on reading soon because she's one of my favourite fantasy authors and Robin McKinley actually has a second Beauty and the Beast retelling. However I'm sure there are far far more out there so please do recommend to me any Beauty and the Beast retellings you've read or even just fairy tale retellings you've read. I'd love to hear your recommendations but until next time happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.